to be in church, isn't it? Yeah. Great to worship the King. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for all those that are watching this via YouTube, I want you to go and grab a piece of bread and to get a juice of some type because we're going to have communion. And we're inviting you to have communion with us as a church. And because uh, really communion is, is an important time. It's a time where we uh, meet with God. And it's a time that we, the Bible talks about us um, judging ourselves or examining ourselves. Um, but just to um, paint a picture a little bit before we get to that. In Matthew 25 verse 47, I've got a real echo here, Cheryl. Um, Matthew 25 verse 47 it says, He will reply, Truly I tell you, whoever you do not do for, me, for one of the least of these, you will not do for me. This is talking about where, where they're saying, well, um, Jesus said, well, I don't know you. And he cast them out of, of, of heaven. And, uh, and he said, well, you never visited me in jail. You never visited me in hospital. You didn't help me when I was destitute. And, uh, you know, the thing is we need to be aware that God has a, a place in his heart for those that are hurting. God has a place in, in his heart for those that are in, in need. To, to be mindful of another passage of scripture, Jesus left the 99 to go looking for the one that was lost. Um, and it's interesting because sometimes we can be quite comfortable in our setting and everything we do, but now God wants to us use us to help those that are hungry, to help those that are thirsty, to help the stranger. No, to help the stranger. Someone that may be different to you or think differently or maybe about different things, that we would help them, to help those that need clothes, to visit those that are sick, visit those that are in prison. Uh, Cheryl and I, on the last night of conference, decided that we would like to have a cup of coffee with someone we don't know. Take them out for a cup of coffee. Well, we uh, met someone who was a chaplain in the Navy, he and his wife, and he was the very first ACC chaplain, and we went and had a, an hour and a half or so with them after the last session on Thursday night. Um, now, I'm not saying he was lonely or what, whatever, but I'm just saying sometimes we've got to go outside of our box and that we learn how to engage with people that may be a little bit different or maybe that you don't know. This passage of scripture goes on and talks about that he would separate the sheep from the goats. I want to tell you right now, you don't want to be a goat. You don't want to be button heads with anything because goats don't get into the kingdom of God. They go to the other place. So let's be uh, assured that we're about, you know, want to live totally and fully for God. The parable of talents, which is also found in, in that same chapter, uh, we're all given gifts and abilities. And God wants to use what he's given us for his glory. And I want you to think about this. I, I said this uh, about the pastors in, in, the, um, in Western Australia, in the Kimberleys that we visited. I said they're like 10, 20 talent pastors. Now the stuff they do, the ability that they have and things they can do. And I just was just in awe of what they do. And, and they're doing it just because they love Jesus. And they're doing it because there's people there that are hungry, thirsty, isolated, and they need Jesus. And uh, church, we need to be uh, people that are prepared with whatever talents that we have. We may not have 20 talents, but may only have one talent. Let's not be like the one that went and buried it in the sand and said, oh, well, God, I know you'll take stuff that you don't, you shouldn't. No, let's, whether we've got one, two or five talents, but let's use what we have so that our Father in heaven may be honoured and glorified through our lives. Amen? Amen. So I want to encourage you as you think about your life, because um, God wants to use you. God wants to use you for his glory. Now, the devil is the father of lies. He's a murderer. He's a thief. He wants to say things into your life that, no, you're not worth anything. That, no, you can't do anything. He wants to rob you of your hope, rob you of your joy, rob you of your life. And I want you to understand, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And, and 
Jesus gives us life, life more abundantly. And, and he's given us that, not so that we can um, hide it or be comfortable, but we could share that wonderful, awesome good news to whoever God gives us the opportunity to speak to. I was reading um, in John chapter 3, um, where it says that Jesus was given the Holy Spirit without measure. And, and as I meditated upon that, Jesus was given the Holy Spirit without measure. Would you like that? Would you like to receive the Holy Spirit like a flow of God in your life without measure? Yeah. So that the flow just keeps flowing, just keeps flowing, just keeps flowing. Um, you know, God wants us to speak his words. So what we're about is we're about his business. And you know, communion is all about where we connect with our Saviour, and we make sure that there is that continuing flow of the Holy Ghost. If we want the continuing flow of the Holy Ghost without measure in our lives, one thing we cannot afford is that allow any sin to have any root or any hold on our, on our lives. Is that? Do you agree with that? Yes. I think we need to think about that because now God has given us this wonderful gift of salvation. Cheryl, can you turn these bold backs down because they're I don't know what it is. It's just really I don't know what else to do. Okay. Um, in 1 Peter 2 verse 24 it says these words. <coughs> he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live what is right. By his wounds you have been healed. Now Jesus carried our sins. Can I change the mic to try to get mic? Hello. <laughs> he personally carried our sins. I want you to think about that. He personally carried our sins. And when he was on the cross, all our sins were placed upon him. While we were still had no desire, we didn't even, we weren't even thought of. But all of sin of humanity was placed upon him. That happened. So that the the price of what sin required could be paid for. In a little while, we're going to take the communion emblems. As we hold those emblems, it's all about Jesus paid a price so that we could have our sins forgiven. And when we experience that, we need to make the choice that we're going to live by what is right. We're going to live in a way that's God honoring. But it goes one step further. It not only deals with our sin, but I want to understand, as I said to Greg before, I am praying for healing virtue to flow into Greg's life. Yeah. And, and this blood clot would just dissolve and, and would be there no longer. Now, whatever your need, physical need, Jesus not only took the, the sin, but he took our sickness upon himself. I know there are people in this room right now that right now you could say, God, I need healing in this area. And you, you could say, hey, Jesus, I thank you that now by your wounds I am healed. Now by this disease, by diabetes, he took diabetes upon himself so that I could be free from it and find wholeness. I'll tell you a, a story. Um, on uh, Monday I had to go to the doctor. And I checked my blood pressure, and it was 191 over 81, which is just a little bit high. I, when I got to the doctor, I was 181 over 80. When I got to the next one, I was 169 over 80. And I said to the um, lady that I was speaking to, and I said, I think I have white coat syndrome. Uh, my blood pressure goes up, because the last thing I wanted to do was to go on more medication. Um, can I tell you, when I got home, my blood pressure was 139 over 63. 
no medication, no, I mean, no more nothing. So praise God. Yeah. Now sometimes things happen within us that so we don't understand, correct? But I can take this scripture and I can believe God. I can believe God that Jesus, you now he was a curse so that I could be set free from the curse of the law. And I can find wholeness in Jesus. Now communion, there should be healing taking place. Now when you partake of the bread, you, know, you can remind the devil of the cross. Now the devil at the cross, Jesus paid the price not only for my salvation, but also for my healing. And this, this evening, when we take the emblems and take the bread, I want you to believe God. God, when I take this bread, I'm believing for the healing virtue to flow into my body. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. God, I'm believing for your healing virtue to be imparted into my life. Doesn't that sound good? Yep. Amen. So that means asthma is gone in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, whatever the issue, we can believe God for healing. Amen. Believe God for change. In Isaiah uh, 53 verse 5 it says, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Amen. Did you hear that? Jesus was peace for our rebellion, for our sin, crushed for our sin, and he was beaten that we could be made whole. Thank you, Lord. Shouldn't we be so thankful? Do you want that healing virtue to flow into your body? Amen. Amen. Do you want it? Yep. This one wants it. I want it. Anyone else want it? Yep. Come on. Yeah. We've got to believe God. We've got to. Yes. No, I think we've got to be thirsty. We've got to have faith. Got a desire. If we don't, we, we no, we'll just stay back. The cup speaks about the new covenant that we've entered into. We've entered into a new covenant. It, it's not through the sacrifice of a lamb. It's acknowledging the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. It, he purchases, it says in Colossians 1 verse 14, he purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, that's what communion is all about. It speaks or points to healing, wholeness, forgiveness, restoration. And I reckon I probably could have found more words. Now, it, it, it's... We, 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 even though we're not perfect in ourselves, we find perfection in Jesus. Yes. We find righteousness. Now we've become right standing before God, not because of our goodness, but because of who Jesus is. And that's just something we should be so thankful for. Because you know, we, we in our own ability will always fall short. But having faith in the one who died for us makes us perfect in God's eyes makes us become sons and daughters of the Most High God. And I think that's a, a fabulous thing for us to celebrate. And church, I'm praying uh, for us tonight. I've been praying that, that on which we're going to do very shortly. We're going to take communion. Last week we sang that song. When I... No, 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 different tune. When, when I look into your eyes. No. Glory, the glory of my King. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. Is that what? Love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. You know, I could sing that, and then you need to have a revelation of this, because this goes back to that very first scripture. You may be the biggest rat bag in our church. Did you hear that? You may be the biggest rat bag. But you know what? If you love Jesus, listen to me, if you love Jesus, you're no longer a rat bag. You're a child of the Most High God. And I want to tell you right now, God is going to work your rat bagness out. 
Because as you choose to live for Jesus, you know what? God will deal with the rat bagness. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah. So that means we've got to trust God, don't we? Yeah. Can I just um, ask you to come, please? We're doing it differently again. Pastor Mark, can I get you to come and hold this for me, please? And as you come, I, I want you to take this and um, just to hold it. I want you to come and, and take the communion emblems now, please. And those that are on um, YouTube, you can get your emblems ready and and I want you to believe God as we have communion together tonight that healing virtue is going to flow. That the life of God is going to flow into your body. That you're going to see and experience the miraculous of Jesus and it's nothing to do with your goodness. It's all about what Jesus has done for us. The bread speaks of Jesus. No, divine health, wholeness is ours as we partake together. The cup speaks to us about forgiveness, understanding that we are made righteous or right standing before God because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And I want you uh, to be mindful. When I look into your eyes, when I look into your eyes, I see Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. We need to pray for a little blessing. She had her appendix removed. Last night, oh. that God would just heal her quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can I just have an indication? I know you've got a cup and a wafer in there. If you're believing for healing tonight, amen. You just, I'm putting my hand up too because I'm believing for healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's my God. Can I get one too, please? I can't move. Yes, please. Thank you. Has everyone got one? Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. As I prepared and I, and I felt God speak to me about this during the week, and uh, the thing is this. Uh, it's like I had a fresh revelation that the impartation that we receive around communion and it's so much more than just forgiveness of sins. Lots of people said they need healed this, this evening. Father, we stand here right now. Yes, Lord. We acknowledge, Lord God, we acknowledge the gift of salvation that Jesus has given to us. We thank you, Jesus, that you died upon the cross. You took our sin. You took our disease, our sickness, so that we could be forgiven and, and made whole yes, Lord, in Jesus' you. name. I thank you, Jesus. As I just believe right now, as you said, I'm the resurrection and the life. I pray, Lord God, for life to flow into people's bodies. Lord, where there's sickness, that sickness would go in the name of Jesus. Yes. And Father, I just take authority over the lies of the devil that says it's impossible for, for you to receive your healing. We come against that because with God there is nothing impossible. Amen. Lord God, we believe right now for your healing virtue to flow and people's lives to be set free and made whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's eat the bread together in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the healing impartation in people's lives right now. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the cup. It speaks to us of the new covenant that we've entered into. We, think we acknowledge, Lord God, that, that we are only righteous because of having faith in what Jesus has done for us. Yeah. And as we drink this cup, Lord God, with hearts full of thanksgiving, we thank you, Lord, for the great gift of salvation yeah. that you've given to us. And we drink this in remembrance of you. Let's drink together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Father, I just thank you now. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Just want to encourage you. I'm looking forward to hearing some testimonies next week how you have been healed because of the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Go in strength. And also to those out in, in uh, YouTube land, we're believing to get some messages back that people have been made whole because of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you.